Uh, I would like to uh, uh, thank the organizers. I'd like to thank Arm for the opportunity to present information and an update on Autolus. Autolus is a British biotech focused on developing next generation program T cell therapies. We're uh, NASDAQ listed, so here's the standard disclaimer, and of course, further information is available from the SEC website. What I'm going to cover today is actually the steps we are taking to build an integrated CAR T cell therapy company. And I'm going to touch upon all of the areas that are needed to be successful in the market and how we're developing ourselves towards commercialization. The first thing I'm going to actually touch upon is our lead candidate, which I'm now uh, pleased to say has actually uh, met its primary endpoint, and that was announced um, uh, recently in the Pivotal study, uh, the Felix study. I'll then touch upon the pipeline. Clearly, it doesn't help to have a very uh, good product Canada if you don't have an ability to deliver it, and uh, scaling the manufacturing is obviously a key element of that, as is the supply chain, so I'll touch upon that. We're also very much a research-based uh, company, so I will also touch upon how we're going to accelerate uh, leveraging some of the value from our other assets. And we're clearly uh, working with others to, to, to build towards uh, commercialization because, as all of you will be aware in the, in, the, um, in the audience, it takes a considerable amount of money to both develop the products but also the necessary infrastructure, the manufacturing, the commercialization, the systems, even the IT systems needed to, to, to work with centers. So we've been working with um, Blackstone and, and we have a collaboration which uh, allows us to collect uh, 270 million uh, uh, towards uh, commercialization of our, our lead product. And uh, just before Christmas, we actually reached two milestones, which meant that we received a further 70 million. So we've received now 220 of the 250 million. Um, and then, you know, clearly with this uh, strong cash position, what this allows us to do is it allows us to go through uh, BLA, allows us to establish commercial manufacturing, and it also allows us to lay the foundation that we will need for ultimate commercialization of the product. So just turning uh, uh, quickly to the lead product, which is Obercell, Obercaptain Auto Loose Cell. Um, this is a standalone, potentially best-in-class CD19 CAR T cell therapy. The first indication it's being developed for is uh, adult ALL. It's actually, uh, as we mentioned before at, uh, previously at last year's meeting, it has a very unique feature. It has a binder which is different from the other commercially available uh, CAR T cell therapies, which use a binder called uh, FMC63. We use a binder called the CAT19 binder. The advantage of this is it binds equally well to the, to the, between the T cell and uh, uh, the cancer cell, but it actually releases faster. So the, the, the kill is more physiological with a faster release. And the advantages of that uh, are purported or believed to be that, that you will have two main advantages. One is, is that you'll have less uh, cytokine release. And the second one, is that because uh, the cell killing is more efficient, you should have less exhaustion. And as with the previous speaker, we do believe that persistence is very important. To give you an order of magnitude, in, 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 uh, and it is a study-to-study -study comparison, but if you look at Kimria and, and Obercell in uh, pediatric use, you have about four times the AUC in terms of the persistence of the product. And by the way, you know, Kimria is, is the other persistent uh, CD19 CAR T cell therapy. So I'm very happy to, to announce two things. Uh, firstly, that we met the primary endpoint uh, based upon actually the interim analysis of the first 50 patients, but the full 90 patient data for the uh, morphological cohort, which will actually be the basis of the, of the BLA, will actually be presented at ASCO on 2nd of June at 1 p.m. And um, this will actually include a presentation of the primary endpoint data, the overall complete response rate, uh, and also secondary endpoints, including uh, the response in MRD negative patients, EFS, and uh, some early evidence of duration of response. And obviously that data will also mature 
over the coming years, so there will be further presentations at the end of this year. And we should see the full benefit of the treatment um, around mid next year when we'll have follow-up data that will actually start revealing what the tail of the, of the effect is. So therefore, what are the true number of uh, standalone, uh, so, so, uh, long-term responders as a standalone treatment. The product is very interesting in the sense that it's actually in four separate evaluations has actually produced very similar uh, data, including the pediatric patients in Carpool, the academic study in Orcar, which was made with an uh, academic process and then transferred to a machine-based process. Then when we brought it in-house, um, the Felix 1B cohort for adult ALL, and then finally in the, in the interim analysis of the, of, the, of the morphological cohort, which will form the basis of uh, the BLA. And what you can see is consistent high levels of ORR, 70% and higher, um, uh, probably uh, you know, close, a bit more in the range of 75 to 80, 85%. But what you also see remarkably is very low rates of CRS, very low rates of ICANs, and almost an absence of grade three or above CRS and very uh, low single digits of, of, of ICANS grade three and above. This obviously is uh, preferential for the patient, but it also has some very practical advantages in terms of the manageability of the product. Obviously, it requires uh, less health economic uh, resources to support the, the patients through the treatment journey. And also it will allow the product potentially to be given in a broader array of centers and also potentially even as an outpatient product, which may be important in countries such as the, the US. So where we are with it, obviously I mentioned we're going to actually, uh, we're going to share the data at, at ASH. We're going to talk in a minute about the manufacturing plant, but we're actually well on the way to actually having a, a commercially ready uh, supply chain. And we're focusing now on some of the uh, pre-launch activities. We've, we've obviously beginning to engage uh, medical affairs activities, and also we're, we're about to prepare uh, the, uh, to initiate onboarding of centers in the US. So something about the manufacturing facility. Um, it, I think it's a testament to how far we've come as an industry, but this is, I think, a particularly good example of what is possible. The manufacturing facility was built from design to completion of the building in 17 months. It was actually possible to do that because we did remote, manu uh, remote construction and we essentially brought onto the site 270 um, prefabricated modules, which were then, as you can see in, in the middle uh, picture here, were actually dropped by crane onto a raft, put into the building, and then uh, tied in, ready to go. So essentially, there's, if you like, if you think about it like a frame, like a Jenga frame, there's 270 pieces that were actually slotted into the building, connected, uh, and therefore the building is, is, is ready to go. The good thing about transferring a CAR-T manufacturing, which is somewhat different from uh, antibody manufacturing, obviously, you're manufacturing on a patient-by-patient -patient basis, so what we're able to do is to take our commercially ready uh, semi-automated process uh, from the existing site in Stevenage and just essentially move the people and the machines to the new facility and, and scale up. So that reduces some of the risk and will also reduce the time it actually takes us to be ready for commercial manufacture. The other important thing is, is the logistics. and. Uh, You'll be able to, to determine from the results at ASCO, you know, how, how we managed to man, essentially complete the Felix study during the COVID epidemic, where obviously, as you can imagine, being a UK manufacturer, we had to overcome some of the, the, the challenges of, of, of less frequent flights to the US, et cetera, to achieve that. So the proof is in the pudding, and so that will also be an interesting aspect, I think, of the ASCO presentation of seeing our ability to deliver. I'm going to be quickly going over the pipeline. We've mentioned this before. Autos has around 100 patent families. We have a whole range of technologies which we can deliver uh, multiple uh, elements in a single vector um, using some of our bespoke technology. But the type of things that we have in our locker include uh, 
uh, targeting, and you've seen, for example, a, a special approach that we have for CD19. I'll talk in a minute about uh, TRBC1 and 2. We have controls, so we have various types of safety switch which either eliminate the T cells or temporarily switch them off. We have an ability to actually impart properties which shield the, the T cells from checkpoint inhibition, TRB, TGF beta um, as well. And then we have uh, persistence modules, cytokine receptors, uh, host immune recruitment, and other types of properties that we can also impart into the cell. Um, actually, I'll go back one slide. One of the things that I think is important is a number of these technologies are currently being tried in our, in our early pipeline. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, there will be data readouts on our on our T-cell lymphoma program, on our neuroblastoma program, and our auto-8 multiple myeloma program, uh, the latter two actually having multiple components to them imparted into a single cell. I will also just briefly mention that the auto-4 uh, data uh, that we've released is looking very encouraging. Um, I think most of you will appreciate that targeting T-cells is, is very challenging. Uh, we have a mechanism whereby we can identify whether the tumor is TRBC1 or TRBC2. And then essentially T cells are actually uh, split in, uh, into two types of T cells with the same function, but the tumor comes from an adult cell, so it rests in a single compartment. So if you selectively abate, ablate a TRBC1 compartment containing the tumor, you should leave TRBC2 intact to render the patient immunocompetent. So we've been testing that hypothesis in, in clinical studies, and four out of four patients at the top dose group have actually responded in the auto-4 study, and the durability of responses is out beyond six months and nine months we've reported. Um, the other thing that we've obviously got is we've, we've got this broad array of technology. We're a relatively small biotech, so one of the things we're looking to do is advance uh, value creation uh, by actually doing um, collaborations, and here's three of the recent ones. Uh, Moderna uh, are actually working with us for proprietary binders for the development of mRNA, uh, RNA-based te te uh, therapies. BMS are using our Arcurate safety switch for uh, some of their uh, oncology programs. Cabaletta are using the same switch for some of their autoimmune uh, uh, disease programs. So in summary, um, clearly it's an exciting year for us. We're expecting to file our first BLA. We'll be presenting the data that will support that, as we mentioned, at uh, ASCO on uh, June 2nd. We, uh, also plan to follow up that data because we're, we're, we're intrigued like everyone else to see if persistence does lead to improved long-term outcomes. As we look to the pipeline, we've got an updates on a number of our programs. Auto-122 is actually a dual-targeted version of, of, of Obacel. Auto-4 will, will also be uh, further presentations this year. We've got a number of uh, academic clinical studies ongoing, which we will actually release data on at the end of this year or early next. And uh, we are actually well on the way to uh, qualifying our, our nucleus facility, our commercial manufacturing facility, and we are expecting to commence uh, GMP operations for that in the second half of this year. And if you want to learn more about us, uh, we will be actually hosting a Capital Markets Day on the 22nd of April this year. Uh, in the uh, morning time U.S. and afternoon time in Europe. So with that, let me thank you.